Greetings world, what's up Toronto? It's your boy Technique the King Kingpin. This is my Toronto VIP TV. We are downtown Toronto at the St. Lawrence Center for the Arts for When Sisters Speak. What's When Sisters Speak? Well, it's an all-female spoken word concert brought to you right down here in Toronto. So, we're gonna talk to a lot of the artists, get a couple of interviews, check out the crowd. Should be a dope show, so make sure you check it out. I hope you enjoy it. MyTorontoVIP.com or follow on Twitter at MyTorontoVIP. Let's go. The 8th annual When Sisters Speak Spoken Word Concert took place January 15th at the St. Lawrence Centre for the Arts. This show featured North America's top female spoken word artists from Toronto, Edmonton, Brantford and Indianapolis. Created by Toronto spoken word artist Dwayne Morgan, When Sisters Speak hails as the largest North American annual showcase for black female spoken word artists. My Toronto VIP was there. I have a problem with identifying my cultural identity, where souls get wrapped in the red tape of their bureaucracy. They try to label us like fashion stating our ethnicity, as if that should determine our status in this society. So when people question where I come from, I'm struck with a case of amnesia. I'm not gonna typecast myself just to please y'all. Limited intellect, don't mean to disrespect, but I'm tired of being thrown in the slush pile like them ugly rejects. You want to question who I be? I'm the poet they call Kiki. I'm off doors to open minds. I'll make your third eye see. This is spoken word, not some after school specialty. We'll get raw, real, and gritty like New Jack City. So when I step to the mic, I strip vocals like Streptococcus and leave you in a trance like I was hypnosis. Get you high off my vibes like drugs for your psychosis till you're itching for more and you're sure to take notice of the next time they speak about a free thinking civilization yet the enslaved in our minds have been picking cotton and plantations and they try to separate us with their modern colonization Woo! time to split but shift our thoughts only one love and one nation so stop with the questions stop stop with the questions stop with the questions and just be stop with the questions your chains of oppressions these years of transgressions and just be thank you What's going on, people? It's your boy Technique from My Toronto VIP TV. We are still here at When Sisters Speak at St. Lawrence Center, and we're here with a veteran, as I would say, in Toronto Entertainment, period. And she performed tonight. Her name is Motion. Motion. What's up, everybody? Question for you When did you fall in love with poetry? Now, I know you MC before. You rap, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. like, we you know this. When did you fall in love with poetry? Wow. That's a question. I try to I, it's, it's funny, the first thing that came to my mind is like, I think I was in second grade, and they gave me those poems that you could you had to write in five lines, right. one word, two words, it's right. more, you know, sinquane poem or something. We're supposed to write one. And I filled up the page, like I just kept on coming with new ideas, and I was like, wow, this is like amazing, I love this shit, don't give me no magic. Feeling of getting ideas and being able to put it down on paper. Um, that's, so that's the first thing. So that, that young? Yeah, yeah. Wow. She's the Rocky Cliff and Bogey Peak. She is divine sculptor, the wind's hand, the chiseling ocean. She's the creation music, describing a poem, the ancient drawings undisturbed in hidden caves. She's the endeavoring, achieving, the hoping, believing, the future, the striving, the laying of legacy. She is the song of memory, the whispering dance, the giant laughter, the quiet dawn, the setting sun, the cricket's night song, the cry that breaks through the silence of more. She is a new day begun. Uh, you know, sometimes we can pin things and we leave them there and just leave them, right? right? And we never go back to it because it's like a general entry. Mm -hmm. And when I was writing the poetry and knowing that these stories had to get out, you know, like Korea, if they had to be generation to generation, right. so what happened to me wouldn't happen to somebody else, it wouldn't happen to somebody else. I began to hear the words every time I, I read them, and then when you read them aloud, you'll hear the, the voice and the tone and the rhythm that it's supposed to go in. So I began to hear the words through the paper from that standpoint, reading it and over reading it, saying, 
hey, you know, I hear this rhythm, I hear, you know, the, the vengeance, or I hear the healing coming through here, right. and this is where I need to do what needs to, to be uh, shown for the audience. And this shall be my first vagina monologue. Each morning before I wake up, he alarms me with his tongue between my thighs mm -hmm. and caresses me in places that have only been seen by him, my mother, and me. Good touch. Bad touch. My great balls of China came tumbling down three years after diaper changing. 36 hours after the ink dry. 2,555 days after the proposal. He fumbled his way into the game and has never been benched because he knows that she is way too insecure in her being to live without him. So I am forced to be all that I can be for her and him. Good touch, bad touch. I started performing about four years ago. I was away at school, I was going to Dalhousie University, and uh, friends were just egging me on, get up on the open mic, go up, go up, go up. So I finally went up and just took it from there. Where do you get your inspiration from to write, to do poetry? Does it come from everyday life? Do you have to put yourself in a certain situation to start the process? Where does it come from? It comes from everything, everywhere, everyone. I have conversations with people. Sometimes people tell me their life stories and I write about it. Um, my personal life story, uh, I mean, what happened on stage tonight with the phenomenal sister that I have to write something right. about that. Like, honestly, it's every day something is inspiring. Welcome to a place where Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream has turned into a nightmare. Where one of his greatest desires has become our number one fear, the only benefit of integration here has been increased welfare. Empty stares follow you from cold eyes of walking corpses. To make money, their only choices are to sell crack or join the armed forces. Welcome to a place where niggas are so used to centuries of being hung from nooses, they now wear platinum chains as their replacement. <laughs> where they call jail a vacation, where dreams and aspirations are left vacant, where nothing amazes them unless you make it out of this self-cleaning oven alive. Because round here, life expectancies don't extend past 25. This is a place where we worship a misconstrued religion, where we pray to our God in these so-called holy buildings while our pastors simultaneously molest young children, where politicians budget cut back public schools and use that difference to build more prisons here. There is no measure of a standard of living because we're living in substandard conditions. These self-cleaning ovens, these self-cleaning ovens have bamboozled our mothers into believing that her children will excel if she just moves from the gutter to the suburbs, only to have her offspring diagnosed with ADD because black children naturally have more adrenaline. So they ship them off to special ed and find the food why can they get money off of oil and be full of Ritalin. It's sickening, ain't it? It's sickening. So I tell mama that moving will be like jumping from the oven into the microwave.